My name is Wael Shawi. Uh, I'm based in Alexandria, Egypt. I started this series in 2010, basically. Um, the history of the Crusades uh, is also about, it seems like it's, it's a dream from Pope Urban II. When he launched the first Crusades in, in uh, uh, 1095, I felt it's like it's like a, a, a okay it's like a religious dream to to convince people to go to from Europe to uh, uh, Middle East and he I mean according to what we know from about this speech because we have four different versions of this speech but it seems that it's all having the same concept the Pope Urban II was 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 uh, um, uh, announcing the first crusades at the same time he was trying to convince the Europeans that if they will die in this trip it's okay because they have their seats in in heaven um, so I, I, I don't think that from this speech I was trying to refer to manipulation that's why I used the uh, marionettes but it's it was it was very clear that this was just a beginning of, of a dream of development that led into and economical and political uh, different tasks. And uh, I think from, from this point, it became more uh, into manipulation and became more into marionettes for me. So I, I worked with this series from 2010 and I finished it this year with the third film. The film that I'm showing at the Bayaniel, it's called the, the Cabaret Crusades, The Secrets of Karbala. Um, uh, okay, it was it was a production that was finished in 2014-2015, um, and it's the longest and the most complex of the three films. It tells the story of the Crusades between 1146 and 1204. So it's between the second and the fourth Crusades. This is the period that it's uh, belonging to the film. Um, it starts with a flashback to a very important battle happened between two groups and it's called Karbala where it's, um, it happened the split between these two groups to, 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 to become Sunnah and Shia yeah. um, and, I, and I, I'm just having this flashback to refer to a bigger split happened during the the history of the Crusades and um, for many scholars they believe that this is was big reason for the weakening that was happening in the Middle East also that made the, the, the Crusader mission even easier uh, but it's for me it's not really about uh, uh, the conflict that it's happening between uh, Muslims and Christians basically it's uh, it's the, the 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 title itself when it's, it says the secrets of Karbala there is really no secrets would be revealed actually in this uh, film um, it's the idea that um, I'm trying from from the film to start with this uh, split and the conflict between these two sects Sunnah, Shia, and ends with the Fourth Crusades that it's mainly a, a sort of a conflict between the Catholic and the Orthodox Church because the reason that made, of course, the, the, the reason that led into the Fourth Crusades is mainly a political and economical reason. The French and the Venetians did not have the money really to go to continue the war and uh, to continue the, the invasion in Cairo and then Jerusalem. So they decided to go to Constantinople because it's a it's rich place and they can attack it. But Constantinople was Christian during this time, but it was Orthodox. And being Orthodox, that gave the excuse for the mission to go to Constantinople and to attack it and to kill people also with the name of, of Christ because this is really what I was trying to, to say 
that it's um, in the end it's it's completely uh, political and economical and it's uh, somehow as it happened between Muslims and Muslims again it happened between Christians and Christians under the name of the yes crusades exactly uh, for me this installation here is is very special actually in, in Istanbul Biennial it's not similar to my installation in MoMA PS1 or in uh, uh, Doha Matḥaf um, because here the location itself is extremely important it's uh, a building that it was built in the 14th century and it's really um, dealing with this entire building as as the the place for installation it's really um, adding a lot to the film um, it's becoming projecting the film inside this place it's like uh, turning the, the the whole place into a scenography which is really for me it's like like turning everything in the film into scenography and turning the main characters uh, all the leaders into marionettes and all of this I feel that by working in this place I am turning the entire uh, architecture into scenography and I'm turning the audience and myself and everyone inside into sort of this marionettes by watching this and uh, it's like playing with the scale basically so I also tried to make another installation in inside uh, the Hammam uh, yeah by using different type of architecture that it's basically uh, the same scale of the scenography that I made in the film um, yes and I, I included maybe one marionette and instead of having a vitrine of 30 marionettes it's very minimal but I, I really think it was uh, very special for me I made three films for Cabaret Crusades one is produced in Italy the second one is produced in South France and the third one is produced in Germany uh, and I think even the location of production is important for me I mean I was really keen into making these three productions one is Italian second French the third German because these are the three main forces behind the Crusades uh, but also very important the location of the filming not everything I planned it really it just happened sometimes by it's like coincidence like for example filming the second uh, film which is called the Cabaret Crusades uh, the path to Cairo in South France in Oban. Oban is next to Clermont where the first crusades uh, was launched by Pope Urban II as I said and I was working with the, the traditional way of making what they call it santons which is ceramic figures that they use in churches to tell the story of, of uh, uh, Jesus Christ and, uh, and this is for me they, they are used to do this and to ask the traditional people and to work with them for one year to make ceramic marionettes that's a big challenge because they've never done this before and to make ceramic marionettes that tells the story of the Crusades from the Arab point of view this is also very important uh, challenge for me uh, same happened when I decided to make the third film the third film is made in Dusseldorf so this area which is the Rhineland let's say is the first area where all the waves of, of uh, crusaders went, decided to walk and to go to Jerusalem most of them were extremely poor half of the first wave went to Jerusalem died because of hunger and because of lack of tools and, and vehicles and everything. Um, so I decided to make the, the third film in Dusseldorf. To make the marionette, it was very important for me to, to work uh, with, with a material that it's linking the fourth crusades that we will be finishing the film. So the fourth crusades was depending on the Venetians. So I decided to make all the marionettes out of Venetian glass. That's also very important. So I also lived in, in Venice for about six to eight months. Um, yeah, with my teamwork and we managed to make all the Murano glass. Uh, so 
the production, the, the location of production is really connected to also to the film. But when it comes to language, because the, the, the three films are uh, um, in, in classical Arabic and the whole script is in classical Arabic, I make all the, the sounds uh, is in, in Egypt and in Bahrain. And, uh, so that's, that's, the, that's the difference here. Really. Most of the, of the music uh, are made in, for the third film particularly, most of the music uh, made in, in Egypt um, and uh, also the voiceover for the actors also made in Egypt but I made part of the music which is electronic music basically in Dusseldorf. I, I think it's, it's important to, to, to analyze history and to analyze the written history because as I, as I said that many times I don't really believe in it that much I don't believe in, in history that much I think it's um, it's the idea that we know that the same history can be seen from different point of views. So I'm trying to more to to focus on that. The idea that it's uh, um, it depends on who is writing this history, basically. Um, but also there is something I cannot deny that the Arab history is not yet. Um, I cannot say it's not yet written. Of course it is written, but it's not been yet said enough. So it may be existed, like when you, when you search for the, for the uh, history that is written by the Arab, you will, see, you will find people like Ibn Qalansi, uh, Usama ibn Munqidh, that I used their writings to make the script of the three films. But at the same time, most of this work, it's still within the frame of, of academia. It's not really been yet used uh, as, uh, as uh, something like really processed to, to go into more uh, uh, artistic forms, different artistic forms. It's still within this um, closed frame. So I think it's important to work with it more. And I think the same way I try to do with many different things, like even the music. In the second film, for example, I worked with very specific type of music from Bahrain. It's called Libjiri music. And I know that this type of music is almost about to disappear from Bahrain. For me, I feel it's the most complex and the most beautiful music I've ever heard in the Gulf, for example. Uh, but it's very old music and it's really, I, I, that's, that's what I say. I think it's not, yeah, we know that it's existing, but it's not been used to transform into a contemporary form yet. And this is, I think, part of what I'm trying to do. And I'm trying to do this also with the Arab history, not to try to change it, but just to try to take it and put it uh, in, in a different form so you can read the present also. It's complex, of course, what is happening in Egypt is very complex, um, but I, I don't think I will be able to live abroad forever. I think it's really important that um, I produce a lot in Egypt. Uh, maybe I don't exhibit in Egypt. Since the revolution, I really don't exhibit in Egypt. I don't find it appropriate yet. Uh, but I produce a lot. I make a lot of music for the films, and uh, this is really part of of, uh, of working really in in Egypt to to work with people and to to have more elements that I can really use it in in a bigger context. Yeah, but. Um, I think it would be also still my base, Alexandria, because also I am, uh, I'm, I have a place called Mass Alexandria that I, I really think it's important for me to, to keep it on because it's, uh, it's an educational uh, program for young artists. This is really important for me, at least now, and I think this is, for me, I, I feel that it's more needed in Egypt than making exhibitions at least for now. Until the situation will change, maybe you, yes, we can make something else. I have, I have a dream project. I have not started this yet, 
I'm trying to make a historical project uh, about Ramses II, the history of Ramses II. Um, we'll see. I have no idea how would it be like, but I, uh, because it's very complex for me to to imagine myself working with the pharaonic history. It became extremely uh, difficult since most of the artists that dealt with this type of history turned it into something more touristic and cliche. So to think how to work with it now is a bit difficult, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it will be.